to me that this is the same Erastus that Paul talks about in Romans 16 because he's a public official. Who right. else would do this but a public right. official? So it appears that this is the Erastus of Romans chapter 16, verse 23. Okay. foot spread pattern. 
which is very interesting, didn't go down with the hull of the ship. So I believe with, with, with absolute, Chuck Missler did the mathematics and he said 10 to the 50th power leads or anything to Paul Shipwreck. That's about as high as you can get. But there's still like a grain of sand in the ocean of all this, the things in doubt. But I believe that these are two objects and the only objects we know about that are man-made out of metal that come to us from the Bible. Literally, these objects are mentioned in the Bible. They're the only objects that have survived throughout history that we can, with reasonable certainty, say that are from the Bible. Of course, there's a lot of heritage and molten about them being in another place, but I believe that these are the anchors. And you were raised with this anchor and used it as a seesaw or you know, played on it. And... <laughs> so, uh, our, I've talked to your mother about this, but, but for, the, for the group, do you think your father would be proud that he was a part of the, such yes, a great discovery? Yes, it's used to say that. I, I mean, I remember him mentioning this when we were young, that he believed that St. Paul was actually shipped in Bouchard rather than St. Paul that he was on the screen. So, yes, after, I mean, he's been missing since 1978, so mm -hmm. the fact that we're here remembering him again gives me a lot of pleasure. And we dedicated the book to Tony, and you'll we'll hear about him on the video, to see photos of him on the video. But to me, I've never met him, but I feel as if I know Tony. And uh, the divers will all tell you that they believe that this, these are the anchors as well. And most uh, people in, this, in, in Malta today are starting to think a little differently, and I think that's why we're having some problems. Most people are starting to say, hey, this is what makes sense, this is all adds up, and so where we're in that cumbersome, awkward stage where someone's going from one old tradition and going into another. Bob, are these two pieces part of one anchor? One is the top, one is the bottom, or are these two different anchors? They actually had, in those days, they had as much as, they, they had much as 11 anchors on a ship. Uh, they were like, the, the cost of them would be like a Mercedes Benz today. They didn't just chuck them over the side. They did this, uh, they didn't just obscurely throw them over. These anchors, the, the lead is very, very sought after. In fact, today, Medical science loves these anchors because the radioactivity goes away in them, and they're really good for medical devices. You can, you can sell these for a little of fortune. This is ancient lead that's in these. When they cut down the one anchor and started melting it, I was told to the divers it didn't make black smoke. Uh, it, it was, so it has a high silver content. So the value in these are incredible. So we know that four anchors are brought from the stern, then the ship went to shore, and we know that there were at least two other anchors on the boat. Maybe these two other anchors were from the boat as well, uh, just found on, on, on the inside reef. You see, they cut the anchors at 90 feet, then they sailed to shore, and they, they, they were under the pretense of dropping two more anchors, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, down, down off the side. So we know the Bible says that there was at least six on the boat at one time. Four dropped out here, two probably sunk with the ship when it hit the reef. Now, the Italians found the shipwreck in 1964, uh, uh, from, from a Roman shipwreck off the reef, and I believe that's that's the shipwreck that they found, and that's well reported as well. So these two are from different. These are two different anchors, and it would have been in this kind of configuration. No, no, no. They would have been. They would have been in this. These anchors would have been in this configuration. If you look at this one, for instance, here in the middle of it, it has a piece of lead going through this. What they did is they put the molds around the wood, and they poured the the anchors with the wood shaft. So it would be intact. You know, in other words, they poured the lead around it so it would be strong and stay there. But they had, they, they bought anchors wherever they can get them. If they had an anchor here or a mold there, they, they, they did. So we, they're probably, none of them are exactly the same on the ship. But this one's a little more weathered because it was on the reef, on, exposed to the rock and had the waves over the years. This one was nestled in the sand. They have to dig this out of the sand to get this one. And you have an anchor collar here, which is which is supports the, the three flukes at the bottom. The shaft would come down here, and these would be just added structural support for the other the other ones. Now we have that big, big anchor there, which is the one that everybody's saying, okay, that's from Paul Shipwreck. Anthony Manano told me from the University of Malta, he goes, that probably was on a big, massive barge that carried obelisks from, from Egypt going to Rome. And I was pointed to this direction, because this is, after all, St. Paul's Bay. This is what they claim. The ship of Paul, on the 14th night, sensed that they were drawing near some land and they dropped the anchors in about 90 feet of water. There is 90 feet of water out there. But the problem is, is to make this work, the ship had to come 
towards a, the bay with the beach. As you can see, first big problem, there's no bay with the beach. This is what they wanted to get to. And then Luke said he saw the waves crashing over reef and he used the term, we're not, we're, we're gonna try to make it if possible. Literally the Greek is, there's no way we're gonna make it but we've gotta give it a try. He's seen the waves crashing over the reef. That's the reef that he saw, the waves crashing on. That reef that's about 100 feet high with the statue of Paul on top of it. That's the reef that the ship went aground on and then it broke up by the violence of the waves and then they got on boards and they swam to shore. So they broke up on that island and swam to shore here. Why didn't they just step off on the island if that's the reef that they went on? And to get to that island, they had to sail in to this direction turn at a right angle with squared rig ship with side pad ruddles, turn right again and head into the island. So making sort of a big U-turn and hitting that island right there. They say it's a place where two seas meet because you see that water in between the two islands. They say, well, that's where the, that's where the seas, the two seas meet. It makes no sense. The only thing God got, has got going for it is there's 90 feet of water out there. There's no bay with the beach. Uh, there's no place that the ship could have gone up on ground. And this is the place where it happened. I think we're actually standing in front of a place, almost a hinge in history, because after the shipwreck of Paul, Christianity exponentially exploded around the world because all those on the ship would have gone to another ship, like the sailors after the shipwreck would have been assigned to other uh, ships that sailed off into the far off regions of the Roman Empire and spread the gospel message in a, in a powerful, igniting way. But I think this is where it all started, is right here. And the divers in about the 1960s and 70s were out here spear fishing along this reef. They used to call it the bank because they had so many fish that they could really go and make money out of it. So they went out here, they dove, and they found four acres, 90 feet of water. Fascinating because that's exactly the depth of water that it says in the Bible as to where the anchor should be in Acts 27. So how far off this cliff right here do you think would be the anchors were dropped? Well, I think the anchors were dropped if you can see that sailboat going out there kind of bobbing along without, uh, it's not under sail, but there's that, that sailboat out there just to the left of that, of that uh, marker buoy that marks the end of the Mutshar Reef. So if you sort of get halfway up between that and come in about, oh, 60 feet, that's where they would have dropped the anchors. Now the Bible says that they, they came down around the Gulf of Sirta, which is right over there. We can't see it, it's out of eye shot, but the Gulf of Sirta in Libya is right there. That they turned the ship, they would have come in a direction just about, just like this, coming right where uh, the, the mile marker is, or the buoy marker is, coming there. It was inky black. It was about uh, midnight. The sailors sense that they are drawing near some land, and the waves would have been crashing on this, on these rocks below us, sending off the sound of them signaling there's something dangerous ahead. In the inky darkness, they said it's best just to drop the anchors and wait for day to come.